better daily. When we work hard in our minds, bodies, and our spirits to become 1% better every single day. Download the app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live to catch the video version of these podcasts. Here's your host and my dad, Alex Van Houten. What is up, Betterment family? This is Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Happy Monday. It's Mindset Monday, and I'm particularly stoked about today's mindset for two reasons. One, I just finished an awesome Christmas break. I hope that you had a wonderful holiday season, whether you got to spend it with family or perhaps you had to spend it in a little bit different circumstances than usual. Either way, I hope it was a very, very blessed time for you and that you have a very, very blessed New Year, but the other reason that I'm very excited because I'm, you know, well rested and and actually it's not like I slept the whole time. A, a Christmas break for a dad with a six year old and a two year old is more like time away from work so that I can play really hard. <laughs> that was that was good, but I'm I'm not particularly well rested. Anyway, it was an awesome break. The second reason, though, that I'm super excited on Mindset Monday and today the mindset is facing your giant. The reason that I'm so excited about this is because today is the day that the Faithful 40 Challenge registration has opened. I tripped over my words there. I'm going to say it one more time so you don't miss it. The Faithful 40 registration has opened and you should be stoked because we have one week to prepare our minds, bodies, and spirits, maybe even our community for what we're going to be undertaking in the next 40 days. So let's talk about the Faithful 40 Challenge and the mindset of facing your giant. So I just finished reading First and Second Samuel for probably the 20th time. I love those books in the Old Testament. And one of the stories in the Old Testament that almost everybody knows is the story where David faces Goliath. Now, we do the Faithful 40 Challenge because of a number of reasons. This came out of the COVID lockdowns and, and whatnot. And one of the things that I was hoping to do with regard to my own personal community was to create a way that we could all control our controllables, despite all the things that were going on around us. There was the big giant of COVID. There was, there was lockdowns in the gym and there was crazy news and people were dying. And, and so there was a lot of things going on. And, you know, many of my clients were like, I, I can't even go to my gym. How am I supposed to continue doing what's good for me? What's healthy for me? And it's not just like, Oh, I want to maintain my six pack abs through the pandemic. It's, it's like, Hey, exercise is a, is a part of my mental wellness and well being. Exercise in community with the people that I see in the gym every day is a part of keeping me straight on the straight and narrow and, and reducing my anxiety and helping me show up well at work. And so all those things were kind of under fire. And the Faithful 40 Challenge came out of, hey, if we could be faithful for 40 days with something, a habit that we have control over, maybe, maybe if we worked hard to get our mind in the right place. And we journaled that publicly. Maybe if we controlled what we, what we ate, you know, we pick our food and, and say, Hey, I, I'm going to eat this on purpose because it's good for me. And we report that publicly. And maybe, you know, I can't do my normal gym workouts, but maybe if I track my exercise progress daily and I, I make it a habit to try to do something exercise wise daily, whether it's a walk, a run, lifting with crappy dumbbells in my, my garage because I don't have a full gym or something. Maybe if I do those things for 40 days, what might happen? What would be possible if I could be faithful for 40 days? And I picked 40 days because it's a recurrent number in the biblical stories. It's kind of the, the number of, of testing, of trial, of perseverance and endurance. And one of the instances that 40 days pops up because, you know, 40 days is, is the amount of time that Jesus is says, said to have fasted before he was tempted by Satan in the wilderness. And 40 days was the amount of time that Moses was said to have fasted before he received the 10 commandments on, on Mount Sinai and 40 days and 40 nights was how long it was said to have rained on Noah and his family while they're in the ark, you know, with all the animals and dog poop, <laughs> a lot of different poop there right? 40 days is a very special number. But one of the instances of, of the idea of 40 days is in first 
Samuel, where David faces Goliath after Goliath taunts the Israelite army for 40 days, right? So, so here's the stage, right? There's, there's the Israelite army on this side and there's the Philistine army on this side and they've been warring. It's been kind of bloody and brutal on both sides, right? But the Philistines have sent their champion, this just towering figure with a giant heavy spear and a crazy sword, you know, and he's probably jacked because I don't know what you had to do back then, but Goliath was their champion. And so he's standing up in front of the Israelite army. And the deal is send any one of your men, your best champion to fight me. If he beats me, we will be your slaves. So this is like all in, right? But if I beat him, you'll be our slaves. And so he comes out and, oh, come out and fight me. Send me your best champion. If I beat you, then you'll be our slaves. Oh, 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 oh. Or at least that's how I say it to the five-year-olds in, in our church, right? And he does this for 40 days, okay? And, and this has just got to be demoralizing, right? King Saul is, is listening to this happen. They got nobody, like nobody willing to stand before Goliath. And it's not just nobody's willing to stand before Goliath, they're all probably not willing to put all of their their eggs in one basket, right? Like, man, how, how is this going to go down? So this taunting continues, and David, you know, shows up. He's there to feed lunch to his brothers and stuff. And, and here's the thing. Everybody recognizes the giant. They see the giant, and it's this big, tall, towering problem that nobody knows how to deal with. And it's been my experience when I'm working with clients that everybody has a giant, Every single one of you, every single person I've ever worked with has a giant. I've got a guy right now that I'm working with that every time he sees himself naked in the mirror, the crazy, emotional, disruptive, negative self-talk that's in his head would crush the strongest person I know. It's it's brutal. He, he sees in the mirror something that isn't who he wants to be, and it undermines literally how he fathers his children. It, it undermines how he approaches his wife. It undermines what he does at work. It's a giant problem. And I'm not saying he's giant. I'm saying that what he sees in the mirror is a giant problem. I have another individual I'm working with who has a genetic disorder that nobody knows how to cure. Like, it's sorry, you got to live with this. This is a brutal thing in your life that's just going to cause pain and suffering and difficulty. And it's a giant. And you you see the problem, but you don't even know how to how to handle it, right? You don't know. And it's <laughs> the 40 days and 40 nights of, of taunting have have been the, the whole life, you know, when you live with a genetic disorder, and I can speak from experience. Every morning you wake up, is a morning where this thing's kind of hanging over your head, this giant's towering over you, and you're kind of living in the shadow of it. And so David shows up on the battlefield, and he's like, what's with this giant? And they kind of fill him in on what's going on, and he's like, well, I'll face this guy. And they're like, no, you're way too young for this. First of all, like, you know, you're young, what do you know? Second of all, like, no, we're not willing to put our eggs in your basket, right, so to speak. So what does David do? Well, he entreats to the king and the, the king's like, well, I guess God's with this kid here. Have my armor. It turns out the armor doesn't fit very well. And so David's like, look, I've got to face this, this giant the way I know how. And I'm not afraid because God is with me. I'm not afraid to face this giant. Right. So he goes and he finds some stones in the, the creek. Like goes and I, I picture him, you know, he stoops down and he's looking for the perfect stones. Why is he looking for the perfect stones? Here's the thing about the forty day and forty nights that Goliath was taunting the Israelite army. David wasn't there for forty days and forty nights. David was a shepherd, and as a shepherd, you know, he had a lot of time on his hands. Guess what he was doing? He was practicing with his slingshot. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Just for fun. Who knows? But he was getting really good at using something small to take down something large. And that's something that we do in the Faithful 40 Challenge. In the Faithful 40 Challenge, we look at, at the whole year and go, wow, 2022 is a big year. I'm sure you want to be healthy. I'm sure you want to be energetic. I'm sure that there are some giants that you're facing that you're not even sure how to take down. And you might even not know how your health and fitness tie into taking down that giant, right? How can How can me controlling my controllables, how can me doing that help my marriage. Like it, it doesn't seem related, right? So David, 40 days and 40 nights, Goliath's taunting the army. He's over here practicing with a slingshot. Well, when he gets there, he knows how to use a slingshot and he's looking for the right rocks. Cause I don't know. Have you ever skipped stones? Like you ever skipped a stone across the pond? You can't just pick up any rock. 
You have to have the right shape. It has to be, has to be the right weight. It has to be kind of the right size, right? Just to fit just right. So that when you, when you sling it out there, it skips across the water. And, and using an old school slingshot is like that. I'm not talking about the, like the rubber band on the wrist thing. I'm talking about the twirling it so that when you fling it out and let it go, the rock does what it's supposed to. You know, it doesn't get caught in the cloth and stuff. Because here's the thing. David's got one shot. He's got, he picks five stones, but he's got one shot, right? Cause if you miss this giant and the giant's like, nice try, kid. That's the end of David, right? And that's the thing about you and your life. In facing your giant, you've got one shot. This is your one life, right? The guy you see in the mirror, that's the same guy that's going to be staring back at you the rest of your life. The marriage you've got, I hope that that lasts the rest of your life. The genetic disorder you've got, I hope that lasts the rest of your life, not the genetic disorder. The struggle that you have with it and whether or not you overcome it will last the rest of your life. You got one shot. You got one shot to face this giant, just like David. So David stoops down, picks up the stones that are just perfect to fit in the sling, right? And that's what we do in the Faithful 40 Challenge. We take some time and we, we sit down and we go, okay, what are my stones? What are the things that I can manage Right. I don't, I don't know exactly how it relates to this whole giant thing, but there are some things in my world that I can manage. There's a mindset that I can sit down and deal with. There are nutrition things that I can deal with. There's some exercise steps I can take. There's one person in our group who in the last faithful 40 challenge, she was like, you know, I can't change a lot of things, but what I can change is I'm very inactive right now and I'm going to commit to getting 5,000 steps every single day. I'm going to stop overdoing it in one day and having to recover for days. I'm just going to be consistent day to day to day. And she did that and it was amazing and she saw great results and her gait got better and her pain improved and, and she started to enjoy it. And I can't wait to see what this Faithful 40 Challenge is going to have for her, for her, the... <laughs> The stones, the stone she used to face her giant was her steps. You could call it a stepping stone. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, that's my, that's my only dad joke today. So, so David picks the right stones, right? And he comes up to Goliath. And after 40 days, that one little stone takes the giant down. And that is my prayer for you over the Faithful 40 Challenge, that you'll face your giant over the next 40 days. We've got registration open this week. Registration is about a five to 10 minute form that you fill out that kind of gives you a helpful start in conceptualizing what it is you're going to post to the group and what it is that you're, you're working to track and what your goals are. And you're going to take five to 10 minutes to do that. And I encourage you to print out those results. When you submit that form, it'll email your answers back to you. Print that out. Stick it somewhere where you'll see it all the time, right? This is the giant you're facing. And these are the stones you've decided to pick up and throw at it, right? And we're going to spend 40 days doing that together as a community and see what the heck happens. And it's been my experience that that dang giant takes a tumble. In the story, just, you know, so that everybody's biblically sound here, it's not the stone that kills Goliath, though. The stone knocks him down. David walks over when he's stunned, takes his giant sword chops his head off. So in the Faithful 40 Challenge, you might not kill your giant with your exercise journaling or keeping your food journal or changing your mindset, your mantra, your your Bible verse, the song that you're carrying into your day with you. You might not kill your giant, but you sure as heck can knock it down. And a giant flat on his back is way less intimidating than a giant that towers over you. So I love to hear from you. You don't have to tell me here in public what giant you're facing, but I want to hear what you're excited about in this Faithful 40 Challenge. I'm going to post the link to the registration. I'm going to be annoyingly loud about it over this week because I want as many people as possible to benefit from starting January 1st off on the right foot, having a 40-day challenge to kick off the new year and to start facing that giant well. But I'd love to hear from you. What are you excited about in the Faithful 40 Challenge? I have a giant that I'm facing that I'm looking forward to facing with you guys, and I'm looking forward to talking more about it over this week. Guys, thank you so much for joining me for Mindset Monday. Face your giant and register for the Faithful 40 Challenge, and I'll see you tomorrow for Nutrition Tip Tuesday. This has been Alex Van Houten in Better Daily Live. Until next time, it's just 1%. You got this.
Thank you for joining us for your 1% better today. Don't forget to subscribe for the podcast. Leave us a raving review to tell others how Better Daily has helped you in your journey. If you want more Better Daily, download our app and join our Betterment family at betterdaily.live. Use code POD to get 25% off your subscription. That's P-O-D, all caps, to save 25% on your subscription. We all have a cross to carry. It's later when we do it together. Go to betterdaily.live today.